Travel listeners, thanks again for tuning into Sin's Workshop. Hope you're having a wonderful day. So today we're going to be talking about The Sacrifice by Rin Chupeco. This is a horror. Um, it's a horror definitely inspired by East Asian folklore. And personally, I really did enjoy it. I do have a little, a few misgivings near the end, and I'll talk about those in a little bit. But overall... I really do th- think that the story itself is engaging. It's a really slow build, but that's what you expect when you're reading about hauntings and ghost stories. You don't want everything. You want that slow, atmospheric, eerie build. And I think Chupeco did a really good job at doing that with the story. It follows this Hollywood docu-series. They're coming to this island um, of Kisim, Kisimpata. I hope I said it right. And because there's a lot of myths about this island. You know, lots of deaths have happened on this island. A cult at one time um, sacrificed someone on the island in, for to wake the, the sleeping god basically. He's called the dreamer and he's also called the god of death. Right? So they're on the island because they want to film the hauntings. You know? They want to explore the hauntings and the caves and the the tunnel systems about that go underneath the island. Right? Their tour guide is Alon. Alon is non-binary, which I think is really cool. And they are their tour guide. Alan's narrative is really what drives the story because Alan has this respectful, cautious tone when it comes to talking about the island and the things that happen. You know, you get the sense that something eerie is going on on the island, that something eerie is happening. You see the manifestations of the curse coming alive and you see Alan really taking note of how the hauntings are affecting the people. Alan has a really strange connection to the island, mainly because it has a very healthy respect of the nature of the island and the hauntings. You know, it's not mocking it. It's just like, look, as long as you do no harm to the island, as long as you have no guilt, the island will do no harm to you. But the moment you start being kind of cruel or vindictive or self-involved, that's when the island really starts to attack and manifest. You know, it's all about respect. Are you respecting the nature? No, their goal is to exploit the island for everything it's got. So you're really submerged in the narrative. And it's really Alan's narrative that's driving the story because of that cautious undertone, because of those scenes where Alan has to yell at the island and be like, no, leave this person alone. Like, yeah, they've made mistakes, but their mistakes are not worth their life. You know, we are human. We are flawed. It happens. So that eeriness that starts to creep up on the reader, it's like a fog almost, that creeps up on the reader, reader, a mist that comes in out of nowhere before it deeply submerges you in everything. I mean, God, I can't remember the one dude, but the the antagonist, right? (laughs) The main guy um, who wants to exploit the island. I mean, he's not a good guy at all. Um, He's kind of similar. I guess you could say he's like a Harvey Weinstein. You know that there's something that happened with some women um, some assault charges, so this is him really just trying to come back, but really what he wants is the God's power, and he is convinced if he does the sacrifices, he will get the God's power. He's kind of a prick, so the moment his true colors start to show, that's when the pacing of the story really starts to take off. You're in the curse, you're in this island, and it just moves so fast, that last quarter of the book. Probably, no, actually that last third of the book. It moves so fast. I will say I also liked the feel of it. it yes, it's following a 
Hollywood crew as they're trying to film something, for me, it felt very much like I was watching um, something like the Blair Witch Project coming to life before my eyes. It was very much cinematic in its feel as I was reading it. This is definitely a story that played out very vividly in my mind, and I think that's due to Chapeco's, you know, not only their skill at building that eerie atmosphere, but also the details when it comes to the scene structure. You know, it's very, very well done. The only misgiving I had is that the ending seemed to be too abrupt. It came in very fast, and then suddenly the story just came to a halt, you know, came to an end. I think it easily could have been another 50 to 100 pages without really dragging the story down. It just felt like it was cut off. Like, not that she was, not that they, Chupeco, was rushed. I don't think that they were rushed. I think they just were writing and writing and writing and typing and typing and typing. And the energy, you definitely feel Chupeco's energy in the story, which I think is really good. But it's just trying to find the right word for it it just feels abrupt you know like they could have done more but the energy is there you know and I think that's why we as readers want more because we really feel Chupico's energy in that in that pacing in that last intense third of the book you really are feeling the intensity of it so I I really do think some of those details at the end could have been fleshed out a little bit more. It definitely could have been easily, easily another 50 to 100 pages without really dragging down the story, I think. But I did love that energy in the end of the story. You know, it really did suck me in. It really did grab me to the point where I was just like reading so fast, you know. It's contagious, you know, Chupeco's passion and energy, it's contagious to the reader. And that's what you want when you're reading a story. So I will give the book four out of five stars. Really, my only misgiving is that ending part. It just seems like Chupeco could have done more and I I wanted more. But that's not a bad thing, you know. It's just that energy was contagious, (laughs) I think. Um, In any case, four out of five stars for The Sacrifice. If you want to purchase the book, I will include links where to purchase in the description of this podcast. And on that note, I hope you will continue to support me by liking this podcast, subscribing to my channel, and sharing it with all your book-loving friends. You can also become a supporter on Buy Me a Coffee, um, Anchor FM, my recording platform, or by just simply following me on any of my social media platforms. You can also purchase some of my handmade candles on my Etsy store. Links to all of that in the description. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and as always, happy reading.